It's been almost a week since the torch-lit alt-right march at the University of Virginia in Charlottesville, but the images of those tiki flames illuminating hate-filled white faces are still very much with me. I am sure they are permanently burned into my memory, and I suspect much of the nation's shared consciousness as well. And that's a good thing. I believe they triggered a moral awakening in some white viewers, which led to moral outrage when President Trump refused to categorically denounce the people carrying those torches and the violence they generated the day after their nighttime parade. We move so fast from news cycle to news cycle in these digital times that we almost never stop to think about the specific ways in which media moments are created and the profound effects they can have on us long after we have moved on with the relentless churn of news. The initial reporting and photography on Charlottesville definitely warrant reflection, both as journalism and culture, given that the events they documented could be a watershed moment in the Trump presidency and perhaps even in race relations to some extent. Overall, nobody did better journalism in Charlottesville than Vice News, and I mean nobody. Even the New York Times and Washington Post, which have done such great work in covering all things Trump related. The Vice News Tonight video titled Charlottesville, Race and Terror that aired Monday night on HBO and has been available since then to non-subscribers on the YouTube channel is the best 22 minutes of video journalism I can remember seeing. The excellence of the Vice News Tonight report starts with the incredible access they got. Correspondent Ellie Reeve seems to be practically embedded with them, but she isn't. She keeps her journalistic distance, but she's constantly with the organizers of the rally, and she's a superb interviewer. She's strong without, be, without stepping on them. She gives them enough room to reveal the darkness in their minds and heart, but she's constantly with them. And the, and the photography, the videography, is outstanding. They had a seven-person crew along with Reeve in Charlottesville. And the great thing about it is she covers the Internet. She's been in touch with these groups. She knew a week before what was going to happen, and so they were prepared. They were the ones who jumped on it. There was also some great still photography, but here's what matters about those images. Those images of hate-filled faces with those tiki torches, number one, I think for especially for some older viewers, they triggered memories of Lenny Riefenstahl's landmark 1935 documentary, The Triumph of the Will, about Hitler rallies in Nuremberg. You can't think of Nazis without those torch-lit parades, and that's what was evoked there. The other thing about those images, though, and here's what I think matters when I say there was a moral awakening. I think for some white viewers who want to deny the level of uh, prejudice, bias, and hate that is still in the culture, you can't look at those pictures and say it's not there. In a way, it's like seeing the videos of white police officers shooting unarmed black men. You say, oh, this doesn't happen. Then you see it in South Carolina, and you say, yes, it did. Same thing with this. I hope, I hope it starts a moral awakening, and we start to admit what we saw in those faces, what we saw in ourselves. I just wish we could extend it to Pennsylvania Avenue.